All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Sunil Verma and with me is VC Pramod. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend state funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Tokyo today. President Draupadi Murmu to inaugurate Integrated Cryogenic Engines Manufacturing Facility of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in Bengaluru today. Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman to review performance of credit and other welfare schemes for scheduled castes in public sector banks in New Delhi. Foreign Trade Policy 2015-20 extended for another six months. Shimla Delhi Shimla Air Services resume after two years. Supreme Court to live stream proceedings of constitution benches from today. Aam Aadmi Party MLA Amanatullah Khan remanded to judicial custody for 14 days in Delhi Waqf for board corruption case. US whistleblower Edward Snowden granted Russian citizenship. US space agency NASA successfully crashes DART spacecraft into asteroid Dimorphos to test defense technology to ward off any danger to Earth from asteroids. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Tokyo this morning. He will participate in the state funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe today. Mr. Modi will also hold a bilateral meeting with his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida. In a tweet, Mr. Modi conveyed his heartfelt condolences to Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Mrs. Abe on behalf of all Indians. The Prime Minister termed Shinzo Abe a dear friend and a great champion of India-Japan friendship. He said, work will continue to further strengthen India-Japan relations as envisioned by Shinzo Abe. Earlier, briefing the media in New Delhi, Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra said that during his visit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will meet his Japanese counterpart, Fumio Kishida. The Foreign Secretary said it will be an opportunity for the two leaders to reaffirm commitment to further strengthening India-Japan's special strategic and global partnership. Japan is one of the most trusted and valued strategic partners of India. The two sides are committed to strengthening bilateral partnership in key areas that include trade and investment, defense and security, climate change, health security, infrastructure, digital space, industrial development, energy and critical and emerging technologies and human resources among others. There is a deep convergence in our visions of Indo-Pacific region and there is close cooperation between our countries on issues of international importance. Foreign Secretary Quatra said, Japan is one of the most trusted and valued strategic partners of India. The two sides are committed to strengthening bilateral partnership in key areas which include trade and investment, defense and security, climate change and infrastructure. Our correspondent has filed this report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the former Japanese PM had developed a personal bond of trust and friendship through their numerous meetings and interactions spanning over a decade. The two leaders made enormous contributions to India-Japan ties and were singularly responsible for elevating India-Japan relations to the status of special, strategic and global partnership in 2014. Shinzo Abe made significant contributions to deepening India-Japan relations, turning the largely economic relationship into a broad, strategic and comprehensive partnership. This visit will be an opportunity for Prime Minister Modi to honor the memory of the former Japanese Prime Minister who he considered a dear friend and a great champion of India-Japan relationship. With Dipendra Kumar, Suparna Saigya, AIR News, Delhi. President Draupadi Murmu will inaugurate the Integrated Cryogenic Engines Manufacturing Facility of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, in Bengaluru today. The cryogenic engines are used by ISRO for its satellite launch operations. At HAL, the President will also lay the foundation stone of the South Zonal Institute of Virology virtually. Ms. Murmu will also inaugurate St. Joseph University and in the evening attend a civic reception hosted by the state government in her honor. Finance Minister Nimala Sita Raman will review performance of credit and other welfare schemes for scheduled castes in public sector banks in New Delhi today. 
the chairman of the National Commission for Scheduled Castes and heads of public sector banks and financial institutions like SIDBI and NABARD would also attend the meeting. During the meeting, the credit given to persons belonging to the scheduled caste community by the banks as well as various loan schemes will be reviewed. Finance Ministry said government has launched various schemes specifically for scheduled castes. Foreign Trade Policy 2015-20 has been extended for a further period of six months. The extension will come into effect from the 1st of next month. Ministry of Commerce and Industry said the government has received requests from export promotion councils and leading exporters to extend the policy. The exporters and industry bodies have strongly urged the government to extend the policy in view of volatile global economic scenario and geopolitical situation. Foreign Trade Policy 2015-20 was unveiled in 2015. The policy provides a framework for increasing exports of goods and services, keeping Make in India vision of Prime Minister in focus. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged people to take part in three exciting contests on MyGov on Cheetahs. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, While we eagerly await seeing the Cheetahs, there are three exciting contests on MyGov. In his Man Ki Baat program last Sunday, Mr. Modi called upon people to participate and stand a chance to win a trip to see the Cheetahs. इसके लिए माय गांव के प्लेटफॉर्म पर एक कंपटीशन आयोजित किया जाएगा जिसमें लोगों से मैं कुछ चीजें शेयर करने का आग्रह करता हूं चीतों को लेकर जो हम अभियान चला रहे हैं आखिर उस अभियान का नाम क्या होना चाहिए क्या हम इन सभी चीतों के नामकरण के बारे में भी सोच सकते हैं कि इनमें से हर एक को किस नाम से बुलाया जाए वैसे ये नामकरण अगर ट्रेडिशनल हो तो काफी अच्छा रहेगा क्योंकि अपने समाज और संस्कृति परंपरा और विरासत से जुड़ी हुई कोई भी चीज हमें सहज ही अपनी ओर आकर्षित करती है यही नहीं आप ये भी बताएं आखिर इंसानों को एनिमल्स के साथ कैसे बिहेव करना चाहिए हमारी फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज में भी तो रिस्पेक्ट फॉर एनिमल्स पर जोर दिया गया है मेरी आप सभी से अपील है कि आप इस कंपटीशन में जरूर भाग लीजिए क्या पता इनाम स्वरूप चीते देखने का पहला अवसर आपको ही मिल जाए वर्ल्ड टूरिज्म डे इज बींग ऑब्जर्व टूडे This day is celebrated every year to foster awareness among the international community on the importance of tourism and its social, cultural, political and economic value. The theme for this year is Rethinking Tourism and will be highlighting the tourism sector being recognized as an important pillar for development. Tourism helps provide employment to millions of people to an extent that few countries are completely dependent on the tourism sector for financial stability. News just in. Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a bilateral meeting with his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida this morning, reaffirming commitment to further strengthen India-Japan special strategic and global partnership. Later in the day, he will participate in the state funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. In Morning Matters, now let us listen to a discussion on Clean Cities, Clean India. The participants are Akshay Raut, former Director General of Swachh Bharat Mission and Urmi Goswami, journalist. We are in the middle of the Swachhata fortnight or Swachhata Pakwara where the focus is of course on cleanliness. While uh, this is not just a week fortnight issue, this is a time to focus more, to think about it and take things forward and understand better what it means to have clean cities and what more needs to be done. Mr. Rawat, thank you for joining us. Where do you think we are in this, in our effort to have clean cities? Where are we right now? Uh, the clean cities is a task that is to be achieved by Swachh Bharat Mission yet. We had under the Prime Minister's call and very active and direct leadership of Mr. Modi that commenced in 2014 with a call from the ramparts of the Red Fort on 15th of August, then converted to a program called Swachh Bharat Mission on October 2 and the 8th anniversary just a week away from now. He gave a call that we must have a clean India. Not only that, he spoke about toilets. He spoke about the problems faced by our mothers and sisters who didn't have toilets at home. That was truly surprising on that day. But the Prime Minister was damn serious. And the rest of the journey has proved why he said so. And Swachh Bharat Mission has gone down across the world as one of the most iconic programs. 
it is not only the largest sanitation program anywhere in the world any time but it has also become the largest behavior change program but then the journey began and we are in the second phase of the journey the first phase was completed in 2019 in a way when 6 and 1/2 lakh villages of the country and later on 5000 towns and cities have declared themselves open defecation free that was huge but the country the government and the leadership and the swachh bharat mission are not resting on this laurel you just now very correctly mentioned we are in the second page and in the second page the one of the biggest targets the goals for the next 5 years is to achieve garbage free cities by 2026 Mr Rawat I just wanted to mention one more thing to you and and wonder how you were thinking of this can be linked with the efforts of garbage free city the simple moniker but it tells a lot more than just about garbage and the prime minister in his address to the mayors mentioned about standardization in urban planning so no more ad hoc and casual planning which is what has been the bane of most of our cities how do you see this happening does this require structural changes or is it possible within the systems that we have right now the new emphasis is on developing the capacity of okay. the urban local bodies we have urban local bodies which are about 5000 in number and they have the responsibility for example you ban plastic waste Uh, SUP particularly, but the burden of implementation of that, all in terms of we may have central agencies like Pollution Control Board, we may have scientific laboratories which roll out lot of technology, we may have also Swachh Bharat Mission in issuing a lot of uh, policy instructions, but. finally the responsibility of executing these on the field the municipality areas is not even on the state it right. is directly on the urban local bodies you know that municipalities in the urban setup and the panchayats on the rural setup have responsibility and they have been devolved certain resources for that all these things that we talked about they have links with the air as well the air land and water all three are covered in swachh bharat mission to make them clean and that's the philosophy of the leadership as well mr rao thank you for taking us through what is actually a very complex uh, mission in the sense that cleaning cities is not just about having more toilets or cleaning the garbage it's about changing the way we look at our cities the way we look at the things that we use in our cities and in our daily lives it will require all of us as citizens as residents to work together with all the various departments of government and authorities to come together towards the mission of clean cities thank you so much once again for joining us thank you very much union home minister amit shah who's on a two day visit to gujarat will attend a series of events in gandhinagar district today he will lay the foundation stone for the 750 bed esic hospital at kalol in gandhinagar in the morning Mr Shah will also inaugurate the newly built underpass by Gandhinagar Municipal Corporation at Gandhinagar. He will also perform the ground breaking of the new building of Gujarat Technological University at Lekhawada in Gandhinagar. The minister will also lay the foundation stone for various developmental works at Mahakali Temple in Ambur in Gandhinagar. During his day long visit Mr Shah will offer prayers at Vardayini Mata Temple and Bahujaraji Temple in Gandhinagar today. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend state funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Tokyo today. President Draupadi Murmu to inaugurate integrated cryogenic engines manufacturing facility at Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in Bengaluru today. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman to review performance of credit and other welfare schemes for scheduled castes in public sector banks in New Delhi. Foreign Trade Policy 2015-20 extended for another 6 months. Shimla Delhi Shimla Air Services resume after 2 years. Supreme Court to live stream proceedings of constitution benches from today. Aam Aadmi Party MLA Amanatullah Khan remanded to judicial custody for 14 days in Delhi Waqf Board corruption case US whistleblower Edward Snowden granted Russian citizenship US space agency NASA successfully crashes DART spacecraft into asteroid Dimorphos to test defense technology to ward off any danger to earth from asteroids 
For quick news updates on the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो देश भर में तू मचाए ज्ञान का ये उपहार मोबाइल पे आजादी क्वेस्ट आई आजादी का इतिहास डाउनलोड कर रहे आजादी क्वेस्ट ये लो जी तो ढेर इनाम मौका पाए जुड़ने का रेडियो और टीवी के साथ सिर्फ खेल नहीं उत्सव है आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव है आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव है डाउनलोड करें आजादी क्वेस्ट ऐप और पाए ढेर इनाम Air services between Shimla and Delhi resumed yesterday after a gap of almost 2 years. Chief Minister Jai Ram Thakur virtually launched the regular flights by flagging off the new ATR 42600 aircraft of Alliance Air from Shimla Airport at Jubbarhatti. Union Minister of State for Civil Aviation General VK Singh also participated in the program through virtual medium from Delhi. speaking on the occasion the chief minister said connectivity remains a big challenge for a hilly state like himachal pradesh and the state government is making constant efforts to increase the air connectivity in the state he said 50% of the seats this is chief minister he said 50% of the seats on these flights will have a subsidized fare of 2480 rupees only under the uran scheme launched by prime minister narendra modi the fare for other seats would be determined by the company itself supreme court's constitution bench hearings will be live streamed from today the proceedings can be watched on the supreme court's own platform webcast.gov.in/scindia/ three constitution benches will sit and hear the cases relating to pleas challenging the center's decision to grant a 10% quota for EWS category in admissions and jobs the maharashtra political crisis and control of administrative services in delhi a five judge bench headed by chief justice of india u u lalit will hear pleas challenging the EWS quota case justice d y chandrachur let branch rather bench will hear the petitions filed by both the udav thakre let camp and eknath shinde group on the issue of the maharashtra political crisis while a bench headed by justice sanjay kishan kohl will hear the plea of the delhi government on the contentious issue of who should control administrative services in delhi over the transfers and postings of officers in the national capital a delhi court has sent aam aadmi party mla amanatullah khan to 14 j judicial custody in connection with a case of alleged irregularities at the delhi waqf board Special Judge Vikas Dhul sent Khan to judicial custody yesterday. The anti-corruption branch ACB of Delhi Police is investigating into a scam involving money transactions in various states and the UAE. The ACB is also relying on a diary recovered during its raid that allegedly contains cash entries made by Khan. The agency has also claimed that a political party is under its scanner while it looked into the money transactions. A case under Khan was filed in 2016 following a complaint from the sub-divisional magistrate headquarters revenue department alleging that appointments to various existing and non-existing posts in the waqf board were arbitrary and illegal. Over the past 75 years since independence India's largest public service broadcaster All India Radio has been the proverbial storyteller for crores of people across the country All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series Azad Bharat ki baat Aakashwani ke saath it showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio In today's episode we will bring you the story of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan which aims to promote Indian goods in the global supply chain markets and help the country achieve self reliance.
Today we are taking a look at how India emerged as Atmanirbhar or self-reliant in the midst of the COVID pandemic. Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan is the vision of New India envisaged by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. It aims to make India a bigger and more important part of the global economy, pursuing policies that are efficient, competitive and resilient, and being self-sustaining and self-generating. On 12th May 2020, Prime Minister Modi announced a 20 lakh crore special comprehensive economic package to fight the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. Giving a clarion call for Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, the Prime Minister also outlined five pillars of Atmanirbhar Bharat: economy, infrastructure, system, vibrant demography, and demand. Bharat ki sankalp shakti aisi hai ki Bharat Atmanirbhar ban sakta hai. साथियों आत्मनिर्भर भारत की ये भव्य इमारत पांच पिलर्स पर खड़ी हो पहला पिलर इकोनॉमी एक ऐसी इकोनॉमी जो इंक्रीमेंटल चेंज नहीं बल्कि क्वांटम जंप लाए दूसरा पिलर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एक ऐसा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर जो आधुनिक भारत की पहचान बने तीसरा पिलर हमारी सिस्टम एक ऐसा सिस्टम जो बीती शताब्दी की रीति नीति नहीं बल्कि 21वीं सदी के सपनों को साकार करने वाली टेक्नोलॉजी ड्रिवन व्यवस्थाओं पर आधारित हो चौथा पिलर हमारी डेमोग्राफी दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी डेमोक्रेसी में हमारी वाइब्रेंट डेमोग्राफी हमारी ताकत है आत्मनिर्भर भारत के लिए हमारी ऊर्जा का स्रोत है पांचवा पिलर डिमांड हमारी अर्थव्यवस्था में डिमांड और सप्लाई चेन का जो चक्र है जो ताकत है उसे पूरी क्षमता से इस्तेमाल किए जाने की जरूरत है The Atmanirbhar Bharat Package 2.0 was announced on the 12th of October 2020 and Atmanirbhar Bharat Package 3.0 on the 12th of November 2020. Several measures were undertaken by the government under Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan in different sectors which include reforms for MSME, agriculture, fisheries and food processing sectors. This campaign also focused on reforms for the poor, farmers and migrant workers. India's spirit of self-reliance is evident from the fact that from zero production of personal protection equipment kits before March 2020, the country developed the capacity to produce over 5 lakh PPE kits daily. From just 1 lakh at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, the nation now has over 3,300 testing labs in the country. In diagnostics, India swiftly became self-sufficient and it emerged as the world's cheapest provider of RT-PCR tests. The government worked round the clock to boost production and supply of essentials such as N95 masks, medicines and made in India ventilators. The country also achieved self-reliance in vaccine manufacturing which helped it to undertake world's largest vaccination drive smoothly. Progress started with the collective efforts of India's researchers and scientists in streamlining the country's response toward an evidence-based approach to successfully tackle the pandemic. India's achievement in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic was acknowledged by global leaders who praised it for its vaccine maitri initiative which provided over 2544 lakh vaccine doses to over 100 countries around the world. The central government over the years has made its flagship Make in India and Atmanirbhar campaigns the focal points of various industrial policies with an aim to lower dependence on imports and to boost local production of high value goods. In Jammu and Kashmir a terrorist linked with Jaish e Mohammed JEM terror outfit was gunned down by a joint team of security forces at Batpura and Gulgaon district yesterday evening the slain terrorist has been identified as Abu Hurara and is a Pakistani incriminating materials including arms and ammunition have been recovered from his possession the information and broadcasting ministry has banned and suspended 10 youtube channels information and broadcasting minister anurag thakur said These YouTube channels were spreading misinformation, trying to sabotage ties with friendly countries and were detrimental to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country. He said the Information and Broadcasting Ministry will take appropriate action against those who will try to spread misinformation in the future. 
सूचना प्रसारण मंत्रालय ने दस यूट्यूब चैनल्स पर प्रतिबंध भी लगाया है उनको सस्पेंड भी करवाया है क्योंकि ये लगातार देश के खिलाफ षड्यंत्र रच रहे थे देश को तोड़ने का प्रयास किया जा रहा था भय और भ्रम फैलाने का प्रयास किया जा रहा था और जो मित्र देश हैं उनके साथ भी संबंध खराब हो इस तरह का दुष्प्रचार किया जा रहा है ये पहली बार नहीं जब दस चैनल बंद किए जा रहे हैं बल्कि इससे पहले भी एक सौ दो चैनल्स पर प्रतिबंध लगाया गया है उनको बंद किया गया है चाहे पांच ट्विटर अकाउंट्स हो चार फेसबुक अकाउंट हो तीन इंस्टाग्राम अकाउंट हो इनको भी पूर्व में बंद किया गया जो देश के खिलाफ जहर उगलते थे और देश को बांटने का काम करने का प्रयास करते थे ऐसी जो भी साइट्स हैं जो भी चैनल्स हैं जो इस तरह के प्रयास भविष्य में भी करेंगे उनके खिलाफ भी भारत सरकार का सूचना प्रसारण मंत्रालय समय समय पर कदम उठाता रहे रशियन प्रेजिडेंट व्लादिमिर प्यूटिन हैज ग्रांटेड रशियन सिटीजनशिप टू फॉर्मर यूएस सिक्योरिटी कॉन्ट्रैक्टर एडवर्ड स्नोडन स्नोडन इज वन ऑफ द सेवेंटी फाइव फॉरन नेशनल लिस्टेड बाय द डिक्री एज बींग ग्रांटेड रशियन सिटीजनशिप द डिक्री वॉज पब्लिश्ड ऑन एन ऑफिशियल गवर्नमेंट वेबसाइट स्नोडन अ फॉर्मर कॉन्ट्रैक्टर विद द यूएस नेशनल सिक्योरिटी एजेंसी हैज बीन लिविंग इन रशिया सिंस टू to escape prosecution in the US after leaking classified documents detailing government surveillance programs he was granted permanent residency in 2020 and said at the time that he planned to apply for russian citizenship without renouncing his US citizenship US space agency NASA's double asteroid redirection test dart spacecraft successfully crashed into the asteroid dimorphos at breakneck speed last night The target was Dimorphos, a 160 meter tall asteroid. Dart slammed into the harmless asteroid 9.6 million kilometers away at 22,500 kilometers per hour. The Dart mission intentionally cla- crashed on an asteroid to test a unique defense technology. The crash is aimed at giving Earth a defense tool against future asteroids headed our way. The 325 million dollar project was the first attempt to move a natural object in space. External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar met US Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin in Washington. In a tweet, Dr. J. Shankar said, "Defense and security cooperation is a key pillar of the contemporary India-US partnership." Both leaders noted the steady progress in policy exchange, interoperability, defense trade service exercises, and military-industrial cooperation. They also exchanged perspectives on the Ukraine conflict, Indo-Pacific developments, maritime challenges, and regional issues. Dr. Jay Shankar also met U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo. The External Affairs Ministry said the con- conversation covered resilient supply chains, Indo-Pacific economic framework, high technology cooperation, semiconductors, and business promotion. And now, an overview of today's newspapers. The Pioneer leads with the headline "F-16s to Park for Anti-Terror Operation." Lame excuse, India tells U.S. You are not fooling anybody. Jay Shankar on U.S. clearance of package for Park F-16s headlines the Indian Express. The government is considering repurposing Covin as the health management information system, and Arogya Setu as a health application informs the statesman. Apple now making iPhone 14 in India headlines the Hindu business line this comes after the company's clashes with the Xi Jinping administration writes the paper Hindustan Times reports that the Supreme Court has banned all commercial activities in a 500 meter radius of the Taj Mahal neo fascists win big in Italy Meloni set to be country's first woman pm writes the tribune 15 killed 24 injured as man with nazi symbol opens fire in russian school reports the times of india and finally hindustan times carries the story of a woman from patna who will finally get to meet her son who was separated from her as an infant when she was sent to jail and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again prime minister narendra modi to attend state funeral of former japanese prime minister shinzo abe in tokyo today President Draupadi Murmu to inaugurate integrated cryogenic engines manufacturing facility of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in Bengaluru today. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman to review performance of credit and other welfare schemes for scheduled castes in public sector banks in New Delhi. Foreign Trade Policy 2015-20 extended for another 6 months. Shimla Delhi Shimla Air Services resume after 2 years. Supreme Court to live stream proceedings of constitution benches from today. Aam Aadmi Party MLA Amanatullah Khan remanded to judicial custody for 14 days in Delhi Waqf Board corruption case. US whistleblower Edward Snowden granted Russian citizenship. 
US space agency NASA successfully crashes DART spacecraft into asteroid Dimorphos to test defense technology to ward off any danger to Earth from asteroids. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.